Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Hey Guys Laughing Out Loud back again with another video. This is more of a video log, um, but I hope I just want to say I hope you guys had a uh, really good holidays. I know it's been a while since I've made a, a video and uh, a little bit behind on schedule as I wanted to kind of start getting these out sooner, but because of the holidays and uh, due to some of the other things, other projects I have going on in my life is a, is a little bit uh, difficult to get these out on the time frame that I, I wanted to, but uh, that should be changing fairly soon. Um, in this video log, uh, it, this is more of a video log, and this is vlog one, by the way, uh, of my pro controller journey, if you will, and uh, you know where, where I've kind of started and where I am now and where I'm going with this. Um, so without any further ado, there is a lot to talk about in this video. It will be fairly long. Um, so let's jump right into it. First off, as you may or may not have noticed, I have a new camera set up and uh, also set up a mic. And I, I used to live stream my artwork uh, uh, a couple years ago and I had some equipment uh, left over from that. And I decided to set that up, which uh, pretty much allowed me to um, give a better presentation than what I was originally doing with, with my cell phone camera. Um, uh, cell phone camera was great as it has HDR and high resolution, but the focus on it was really bad. Uh, mounting it to a tripod was very cumbersome. It, it, it was, it just didn't work very well. If you noticed on some of my previous videos, uh, a lot of times I'd be holding the controller or whatnot and be out of frame like this. And the reason why is because I could never see what was going on in frame. And now with my new camera setup, I can see everything while I'm recording this. So I know if I'm in frame, I know if things are in focus, uh, it's just much better. Uh, you may also notice that the lighting uh, and the color may not be the best. The I'm using a camcorder. Uh, I, I know ideally it's better to use a high-end DSLR camera, uh, but I, unless I start making serious money from YouTube and whatnot and re, uh, creating these videos, this is what I'm going to stick with for now uh, because buying a camera like that is very expensive. And this camcorder works pretty well. Um, just the color is not the best. Uh, the lighting in here is, this is where I do my artwork and I set up the lighting just specifically for my artwork. Uh, it's not the best for videos. Uh, it will work, but I don't want to alter the lighting uh, just because it was very difficult to set up for that. Uh, but it will work for this and, uh, and any future videos. So anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, oh, I did have a few problems with the mic. Uh, I ended up finding a mic that I had already purchased uh, a while back. And uh, this mic seems to work pretty well, much better than my previous. So that will that's also an improvement. I've also set up my other, my workstation with a video editor. Uh, I, in college, I did uh, train in Adobe Premiere, but there was a steep learning curve to it. And I have not used Premiere in a very long time. And jumping back in, it's not like riding a bicycle where once you learn, you, you'll remember. It's not like that. I mean, the basics, yes, I do remember the basics, but there's a lot to it. So I wanted to find me a program that would allow me to jump into video editing and just start being able to put out content as quickly as possible. And then as I go, start adding, you know, all the special graphics and things like that. So instead of going with Premiere, I ended up going with DaVinci Resolve. Um, so I'm kind of dicking around with that, trying to get that uh, that down. Um, so better video quality will, will is coming soon. Uh, and also with the editing. Uh, and as you have noticed, uh, I do kind of stutter a bit as, in regards to saying uh a lot. And despite uh, what I have presented in my videos, I actually did take speech in college. I uh, actually did pretty well with that, but that was almost 10 years ago. So um, I'm horribly out of practice, but with video editing, better scripting and more practice, that should uh, mitigate and improve. So I apologize if that is annoying because I listen to it as I go back and watch these videos and I find it annoying. So uh, I can only imagine what you guys think of it. So that that will be getting better. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, because I've got my setup uh, going now, I will be starting to create Steam software videos to start teaching you guys about the Steam software and how well it works with the Pro Controller. So um, 
and I'm going to do an intro, uh, a couple of intro videos for it uh, because we need to learn to crawl before we can walk and we need to learn to walk before we can run. And if you guys, um, especially some of you guys, and I'm not talking down to anybody here, but if you guys try to jump into the Steam software and you have very little experience with it, uh, or you're just not very tech savvy or computer savvy, uh, most likely you will get turned off on it and say, screw you, I'm not fucking with that. And that's the last thing we want. Um, I think with the right guidance and the right tutorials, uh, I think this is something that is going to be very beneficial and powerful to a lot of you. There are also some other YouTubers out there who I will be referencing during this journey uh, that I will highly recommend that you guys to check out as I'm hoping with, between me and those other YouTubers that this will be something that will be a benefit to you guys. Okay, moving on from that topic. Now, uh, in my previous video, I mentioned that I had ordered some mod sticks and I found a woman online who had three of them, uh, but I didn't want to buy them for a couple of reasons. Number one, they were for the Xbox One. At that time, I was not sure if the Xbox One sticks were going to be compatible with a DS4 controller. So that was a big concern. Uh, I later learned that they are in fact compatible. Um, the other issue was, as you can see in this video, they are blue. Now, I personally, as you see here, I wanted to go with a red and black theme with my controller. Uh, and of course, I'm going to be changing these buttons out to black. Uh, but anyways, I didn't want to pop in these mod sticks in this controller uh, or any of my controllers with, a, with this color scheme uh, with these. And these are aluminum, by the way, and I'm going to break these down here in a little bit. Um, so I didn't want to get them because they were blue and, uh, these, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to buy these anymore, uh, for now. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk actually, uh, no, not the end of the video in a little bit. I'm going to talk about that, but, uh, you can't find these for the DS4 controller unless you know somebody who has a pair used, but anybody that sold these online, they're out of stock and they're out of stock on the Xbox ones as well. So, uh, about the best way to, you know, let me zoom in a little bit uh, so you guys can see. Uh, about the best way for you to acquire these is for you to uh, find them used from somebody who owns a pair. Uh, maybe somebody throws them up on eBay, which is how I found them. I actually got them new, but it doesn't really matter uh, whether they're used or not as long as they're not damaged. Um, or, you know, you know somebody who has a pair that they're willing to sell. Now I was able to acquire three sets of these. Um, and uh, I got two dark blue, which was this color here. And then I got these light blue. Now, I, like I said, I didn't want to buy them for due to the color, the color issues. And, and uh, originally because of, they were for Xbox One. But once I learned that they were compatible, then I was just, you know, thinking, okay, well, how can I get these to be black? You know, what, what options could I go with? And for those of you who are not familiar with painting, uh, painting aluminum is very tricky. It's very difficult because paint uh, generally does not want to adhere to aluminum. Uh, it will, but it's very, very difficult to, to get to stick to aluminum. And then if you do get it to stick, it scratches really easily uh, over time. It can bubble up, flake off, things like that. So that was a problem. And, you know, again, was another reason why I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with these uh, and why, you know, I was considering just sticking with the, the evil sticks. However, uh, I, I started, you know, during this journey, I discovered that you could actually uh, remove the anodization from the aluminum and have them re-anodized if you, if you wanted. Uh, that I was not aware of. Uh, you could also have them plated if you want. Um, so I started looking into that. Once I acquired these, I got them in. I actually did create an unboxing video for that, but I ran into technical difficulties with the video and my SD card, which is another thing that pushed me into setting up this new camera setup. So that video didn't, didn't turn out so well. Um, but anyways, I looked into uh, getting these stripped of the anodization and either anodized black or plated. And unfortunately, uh, long story short, it can be done, 
but it's very, very expensive. It actually doesn't cost that much to do. What costs so much is the companies that will do it, most of them are into plating for aircraft parts and they don't want to take on projects this small that isn't gonna generate very much revenue for them because they're actually losing money. So they actually have to charge a lot to do anything. And while I could have had these plated or anodized, the minimum I would have been able to do it for was about $150. Now I could have gotten all the pieces done for that price, but that was just way more than I was willing to spend on something that literally, it, you know, for the most part, cause I, I run a rubber boot on top of mine, uh, on, the, on the tops, so the only part that's shown really is the the dome and the the part the 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 shaft. So just didn't feel that that was justified dropping $150. Um, actually, uh, the the chrome plating or black plating could have gone with either or was going to actually run me about $200. The anodize uh, was going to run me $150 from two different companies and. Uh, what's funny is uh, the companies that do it, there's only uh, seven or eight in the U.S. that are able to do it, and three of them are actually located in my home city. And you're welcome to do the research to figure out my home city, but it is San Antonio if you haven't already seen on the uh, unboxings. So anyways, moving on from that, I decided that that was just not an option. So I was kind of, you know, Concern. What am I going to do with these? Because I really, really didn't want blue. Then a gentleman had mentioned to me a, a, a coating called Cerakote, which is used for gun parts. And Cerakote is very cheap. Uh, I could have actually had all of these done with Cerakote, any color I want. I obviously want matte black. Uh, glossy black would be all right. And that uh, does work on aluminum. And I, like I said, I could get it done for about $75. But it also will scratch over time. And as I said, uh, it, it's mostly used for gun parts. I looked into it and $75, while that was more agreeable, was still a little high. I was open to doing it at that point, but that was still, I still wanted to see if there was another option. And I had remembered that I actually had painted, uh, which brings my point, I had actually painted some aluminum parts uh, for a monitor mount that I had made a while back. And the I, I spray painted it with uh, Rust-Oleum primer uh, with uh, black matte and it it was aluminum and it took it fine. It it doesn't scratch easily. It, it held, holds up well. And I thought, you know what, that seemed to work just fine. So um, I thought, you know what, let me try it out. So what I did is I actually tested it out. Let's see if I can put that in, in frame there. I tested it out on this D-pad here, and uh, this D-pad uh, could not be used because it's for the Xbox. It is not compatible with the with the uh, PS4 controller, and um, I decided, well, I'll paint this, and it turned out good. And it does scratch, but it's real difficult to scratch. Like if I take my fingernail, like it's actually holding up much better. I actually painted this a week ago, and uh, if you see right there. Uh, let me see if I can get it better in frame there. There's a blue, a blue nick there. That was the next day, 24 hours, and I tried to scratch it, and it did scratch. And I scratched it with my fingernail. And it was actually still a little bit sticky. Now, it's it's already been a week. It's already set up really well. And I've tried scratching it with my fingernail with roughly the same, uh, the same, uh, amount of pressure and it's not scratching so this holds up fine and it cost me less than four dollars to do this so I went from two hundred dollars down to four dollars to painting these and that brings me to this this is the mod stick fully in its glory uh, painted matte black versus the blue I don't know if I can get that to focus because of the background. Let me get, let's see. Okay, there we go. It's having a hard time focusing on the matte black because of the of the matte, but it, it holds up really, really well. There's a little bit of dust on it. But, um, so I got them black. But <laughs> there was another problem. There was another problem. And uh, let me uh, 
get to that. So this is a rocker mechanism, which is found in the DS4 controller. And the, the rocker mechanism is basically what, this is the default stick that fits on the DS4 controller. And, you know, it just sits right on like that. And then you, you know, rock it around. I actually modified uh, this one. So, um, but the problem, uh, I'll get to the modification in just a second because I actually did a couple. The problem with the, the, the rocker and that these are for the Xbox One is this thumbstick, let's see if I can get that in frame better. Yeah, that focus is really good. So that gray stick, it's actually not metal. It's plastic. I thought they were metal. Uh, and once I found out they were plastic, uh, I was like kind of relieved because one of the technical problems that I had with the mod stick is the dome was actually rubbing up against the inside face of the controller. So let me uh, let me see if I can pull that out. So what was happening is when I put the mod stick in the controller, it was actually rubbing up against the 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 inside. I'm trying to get in frame here, it was rubbing up against on the inside, and it was getting stuck. And that was because the dome, the dome, and I'm not going to be able to get a very good angle on this. Uh, at this camera angle, the the dome from the default stick is slightly, just slightly different. But the other problem is the keyhole in here is actually uh, shorter. So when you go to put it on the on the uh, on the rocker mechanism inside the controller, it was sitting up higher. So what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to cut this, the plastic rocker, this, this gray stick, I had to cut it down about an eighth of an inch in order to get the, the mod stick, I don't wanna fit, put it on right now because it's kinda hard to take off, in order to get the mod stick to fit onto the rocker and fit inside the controller. So that was kind of an unexpected technical issue but I did get it to work. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself. Now, I know some of you guys are probably saying, well, you know, I went through a lot of trouble just to get these mod sticks to work. Well, I haven't really demonstrated what exactly these things can do. So let me uh, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, that's another thing that I really like about this camcorder setup is the zoom works really well. Uh, it's very easy to get to. So as you as you see the um, let me just strip this down to the bare here so as you can see this is just the default dome and it's it's got a key just very much like the the stock controller this is the stock over here and this is the mod stick and it just sits right in there um, and what allow what the benefit of this there's a few uh, number one, it's metal. So the, uh, for the most part, it's going to hold up a lot better than plastic, which uh, I really like the durability fee factor on that. Uh, the other thing is, and we talked about this before, actually I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. Um, you're able to adjust the height of your thumbstick, whereas like the default sticks, the height of that, you know, I, I'd, I'd say maybe is about a quarter of an inch, whereas the height on this is, you know, going to be fully adjustable. And in order to do so, let me see. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit better so I can use the background. So you take basically this threading here and you screw it into the mod stick. Forgive me, my hands are, are shaking. So you screw it into the mod stick. Okay. Then once you get that threaded in, and mind you, this would already be installed on the controller. Then you have... Then you have 
various washer sizes that you can go with. Uh, you've got a black one, which is one of the larger, and you can put you can put uh, that on there. And then after you you know put that on there, then you can take your the thumbstick top. Forgive me, I'm trying to watch the screen and do this at the same time to make sure that I'm staying in frame. This is easier than what I'm leading it on to believe. Give me one second, let me just unthread it a little bit. That'll help. Okay, so once you get it threaded, then you just screw it on and voila, there you go. And now you can kind of see, you know, how this system works. You've got the black washer and then you've got you've got these two other washers here which are different thicknesses. This one is about half the thickness of the black and then the silver is about half the thickness of the blue and of course you can always go to your heart local hardware store and you know get your own uh, washers to adjust it you know even more precise however you want it but the point of these mod sticks is it allows you to precisely modify the height of your thumbsticks now these are not going to be the best if you want quick interchangeable thumbsticks uh, that obviously you know having to screw them on and off isn't the best system if you want them to be quickly interchangeable but if you just want something that you maybe just need to change out once in a while or once you got it set you leave it this is definitely a good system to go with uh, the only problem that I foresee with this system is you need to be careful that you don't cross thread and, and because it is aluminum and strip it out uh, because the shaft is uh, the 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 steel shaft that you're screwing into is is steel, and aluminum is very soft, so it can strip very easily if you're not careful. So that is one of the benefits. Now the other benefit, as I've discussed previously, let me pull off one of the. Um, I actually forgot the, actually, wait a minute. Yep, I got it right here. So the other thumbstick, uh, this is an evil stick here. And you can see the shaft diameter there. And then you can see the shaft diameter of the stock stick here on the right. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to get all these to frame together maybe so this is not the best setup for this <laughs> presentation but you can kind of see the difference uh, between I wish I can get those to hold all right so you can see the difference in thickness of the thumbstick shaft and obviously the stock is ridiculously thick and and then the evil sticks is actually a pretty good size and then the mod sticks is like really really small now there are some really good benefits with going smaller in fact the smaller the better because it opens up a lot more options uh, but I would not want to go smaller with plastic but since these are metal you're kind of able to get away with it now here's some of the benefits because because this is smaller, what it is going to allow you to do is when you're articulating or rocking the thumbstick in motion, you're going to be able to rotate the thumbstick. I don't know if I can put it in here to demonstrate. You'll be able to kind of rotate the thumbstick. Uh, you'll be able to articulate it more than you would a stock stick because the shaft is thinner 
Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, why does that matter? Well, it actually allows you, when you pair with, when you have multiple things coming together, like the planets coming into alignment, it really ups your gameplay. So D, having a thin diameter shaft on your thumbstick, increasing the thumbstick tension, okay, um, and then increasing the, the thumbstick height just allows you more mobility and and you can adjust the sensitivity as well in your game. It just gives you more functionality in regards to control uh, of your character or your aiming or whatever it is you're, you're using your thumbstick for. Um, so that is why, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of go with that. So, um, anyways, moving on from that, one of the, one of the things that I wanted to do as I, uh, tested this out, like, okay, now that I've got these painted black, I, I know that they'll fit. Um, I finally got them. Let me zoom back out. I finally got them installed on a controller. Um, this is a a demo controller that I'm modifying myself because I've been learning how to mod uh, controllers, uh, which I'm gonna discuss later in the video, uh, but just to stay on point. Uh, as you can see, I have installed the mod sticks on this controller. And they're, you know, obviously they're black. So, and this is one set, I have three. So I've got the, the black set, this black set down here, this set is going to be installed on on uh, version one. This is my version one. Uh, I'm going to have them uh, relocate uh, these buttons and then uh, uh, swap out the thumbsticks. So I'm going to send this in uh, after the after the new year and go ahead and have them do that. Um, so I know that they'll fit, but like I said, I had to modify it by cutting down the thumbstick. So, but it does work. Like it works really well. It doesn't stick. Um, it's really good and it feels good. And as, like I said before, I get a lot more articulation rotating around than I would if I were using a, a, a stock controller, which unfortunately I did not bring my stock controller to demo. Um, but you guys get the point. So anyways, now you guys can see the benefits of mod sticks, but uh, I know it seems like a kick in the nuts because you know, you're, you're hearing me talk and rave about these mod sticks, but yet you can't buy them. So you probably feel like, why the hell am I watching this video? Here's the thing, guys. Uh, you know, as time goes on and some of you discover this video, uh, what I wanna do is, if, if you guys who watch this video show enough interest, uh, what I'd like to do is take this design, I wanna modify it a little bit, um, and take it to a machinist and, and see what it would cost to have it replicated. And then maybe do either an Indiegogo campaign or a Kickstarter campaign so we can have these started again and, and have them you know made so we, we as consumers, as gamers, can start using them again. Um, there are a couple, you know, modifications I want to have done. Um, I'm considering making them to where you can possibly swap them out like the oh, wrong controller, um, swap them out like the evil sticks. So that way you can just pull them right out, uh, if you need to. So you don't actually have to disassemble the controller all the time for the initial install. Yes, but uh, I'm considering that. I'm also considering a different system other than maybe using a threaded system or maybe like some kind of locking mechanism. I don't know because the threading system does allow you to precisely adjust the height of the thumbstick. So I'm still brainstorming about how I would improve upon these. Now, apparently I did talk to the woman who sold me these and she said that the gentleman is alive. Uh, what happened was he just decided to quit making these because he started producing, uh, he started a gun parts business and that's doing really well for him. So he doesn't have time to mess with this anymore. 
which is really sad to see because this really is a fantastic design. Um, so anyways, that's, that's kind of what I'm interested in possibly doing, you know, uh, taking it to a machinist, seeing what it would cost to have them replicated or, or a similar design. And then, uh, maybe doing like an Indiegogo campaign, a Kickstarter campaign, uh, to allow you guys, anybody interested to be able to buy something like this and have them installed in your, on your controller. Um, so, uh, there's a little bit more to talk about that, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to, uh, what I'm going to do. So now that I know that they will work in the controller, cause I've installed them on this, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to send, uh, Christine off. That's her name. I named her Christine from the John Carpenter and Stephen King film. Um, I'm going to send this off back to battle beaver. I'm going to have them install the mod sticks on this controller. Uh, I'm also going to have them increase uh, the thumbstick tension on the left stick because this is default. I'm going to just have them go with the increased, which is the middle uh, the middle tension uh, instead of the extreme. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to have them uh, also replace the color of these rear buttons to black and move the black buttons up a bit. And I went ahead and made a new design. Uh, I made a template here. So that way in the future, uh, I know exactly where I want my holes to be. So when I go to make, if I need to make a new backside, um, I don't have to guess. I know exactly where the holes need to be. And uh, I'm actually working on a mold. So that way uh, I can get them exactly where I need. I don't have to guess. I don't have to measure. I just pop it in. I, I, I lay the dot in for uh, the, the drill hole drill my pilot hole and boom, I've got exactly where it is. So every single time I do that um, and I pick up the controller, the buttons are going to feel exactly like the original controller. Um, this is another uh, demo that I made. I've been, you know, kind of just dicking around with testing out and uh, seems to, you know, seems to work pretty well. So um, I'm, I'm having to increase the thumbstick tension on the left to increase uh, replacing the rear buttons and relocating them and installing the mod sticks uh, on my original controller. And uh, they already kind of gave me a price quote. I'll be able to do all that for about 40 bucks. Uh, now, part of it is my own fault. Uh, you know, number one, I, I, I didn't know how it was going to feel until I tried it. Now that I know how it feels, I know I did, I actually recorded myself playing with the controller so I could see what exactly my, my fingers were, where they were sitting, how they were moving. And I was able to record from underneath and on top. So I was able to get more accurate results as far as the button placement. Now going with paddles would have helped, but unfortunately with paddles, it adds bulk to the controller. And unless you do it, uh, a good paddle system, it's, it's pretty difficult. I really do like the button system. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, so anyways, and then of course the, the color, you know, that I wasn't going to know until I saw it. So going to knock out two birds with one stone on that one. Um, now, as I, as I mentioned earlier with, the, with the installing the mod sticks on Christine, because the thumbstick diameter is so much thinner, I noticed that on a normal controller, the diameter will actually hit the edge of the faceplate. But on this, it does not. Now I know you probably, let me see if I can get it in frame. I don't think it'll focus quite enough. And because of the color, you, you, it's it actually doesn't touch. It comes close, but it actually doesn't touch. And that's because the diameter is very, very thin. It's close. It's close to touching, but it's not quite there. But some of you may notice when you're playing, you kind of hear that, that tapping, if you will. I know you can't see it, but I'm putting it to the mic so you can hear. That's the tapping of the, the control stick hitting the edge of the faceplate. Well, it's actually not. It's actually hitting the rocker inside. Normally it would be hitting the faceplate, but you hear and you feel that that 
uh, that collision, if you will. And it's not exactly the most comfortable feeling. I mean, it's not terrible, but it doesn't feel very comfortable. So I came up with an idea uh, that I have not been able to fully test. Uh, and I basically came up with an idea of adding a rubber boot, if you will. I just took this piece of rubber, it's like a rubber washer, and I actually added it to the diameter of the mod stick. So that way, once it hits that edge, the rubber makes contact with the edge and it gives it kind of a nice, soft, abrasive contact. And it doesn't feel so clunky. It feels nice and smooth, nice. It, it just gives it a nice uh, fidelity, if you will. I know it sounds ridiculous, but once you add all these little fine details to a controller, you go from something that is like a Yugo to like a, a friggin' Mercedes. I mean, it's the quality is just so much better. Um, however, this this concept of this little rubber boot, I can tell it's going to work, but this one won't work because it wasn't tall enough. It was just a little too thin. So I need to go to the hardware store and see if I can find something that will work. Um, there's a couple ideas that I have, but um, that that's you know something I played with. Now, I did find something online that was made a while back. It doesn't seem to be working too well, uh, which is a foam boot where basically uh, players would add like a foam boot to their controller stick and it basically added like tension but it also kind of gave it a shock absorbent to prevent that clunkiness whenever you would you know articulate the thumbstick like i said i don't know if you can hear that so um the foam while that's okay i think the rubber would work better uh, but you know, only I just have to test it and see. Plus, I have to find something that is going to actually fit, and then of course test it. Um, so, anyways, uh, I did get ahead of myself. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I did uh, figure out you know how to create a template for the buttons, so that way, if I for whatever reason need to make a new backplate, you know I've got a template to work with. Now I have been. Uh, you know, dissecting controllers. I've already kind of torn apart uh, two controllers. Um, they're they're actually pretty easy to assemble, disassemble, and reassemble. They're actually pretty easy, and um, I will be making videos on how to do that. There are already videos online on how to do it, but a lot of them are outdated because um, they're using a lot of the older controllers. And while that is still a good reference and it will work, I want to use the more newer controllers because that's what we're using now. Um, Sony has been real, excuse me, real notorious for releasing new versions of these controllers. That's a good thing. And it's also a bad thing. It's good that they're updating it, but it, it's kind of a bad thing because as they're updating these controllers, it makes some of the modifications for parts and chips to become obsolete. That's the bad part. But the good part is every time they release the controller, a revision, uh, there usually is some kind of an improvement. Um, but some people believe, I, I'm not sure that I quite believe in this, that Sony does it to uh, prevent gamers from uh, modding their controllers to make it more difficult uh, to, I guess, they consider it cheating, um, which is debatable. Uh, depends on how you're using it and what you're using it for. Uh, I'm not so sure that that's the reason. I I, I think they do it because they want to uh, improve their quality of their products. Uh, that's my belief, but I, I really don't know. Um, so anyways, I, I have learned how to add um, or install the rear buttons and remap chip for a pro controller. I know how to do that now. Uh, I still have not done it, but I have a lot of confidence that I'm ready to go ahead and start doing that. Um, I still need to get a few things and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the other thing that I was very puzzled about is how do they create these smart triggers and smart bumpers? I, I really didn't know how they did that. Uh, I mean, I knew that they installed a button, but I didn't really know how it worked because on the inside of the controller, 
this is ideally what you what is used uh, as your buttons. You have a rubber membrane inside the controller. Um, I'll use this as an example. This is like one of the rubber membranes uh, that actually fits for the home button there. And it just, you, you touch it and it makes contact with this, with this board, which is in contact with the motherboard. And that's what sends your information. And I was puzzled how, in how do they actually make the, 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 the smart triggers actual buttons. And what they do is they install, let me zoom in. Actually, I can just see if I can. Oh. I just dropped that motherfucker. Sorry about that, guys. I just dropped this. This thing is pretty tiny. So let me see if I can just zoom in a little bit. Okay. So they install uh, these tack switches, and they're just basically mechanical switches. Uh, they make different sizes. They're very cheap. These things are like dirt cheap. You can buy like hundreds of these for like five bucks, and you can get various sizes and whatnot. So they install uh, one of these tack switches, actually two, for the bumper and the trigger. However, what I was puzzled about is how does that interface with the controller because the controller uses this to interface the buttons. So I, I really was kind of puzzled at how they interfaced it. And then I saw how the mod chip works uh, because I watched a video on how the, uh, on the mod chip. And what they're doing is they're actually soldering the button they're gluing the button inside. They're mounting it inside where the trigger goes. They remove this part and then they hot glue one of these, or actually two, one for the bumper and one for the trigger uh, to install. And then they solder the, the wiring directly to the mod chip. And that's how they get the smart triggers and smart bumpers. So when you when you're hearing the button inside and the buttons in here are probably a little bit bigger that one's a really tiny one they like i said they make different sizes so that's basically how they do it and then of course they just install like a bumper uh uh bumper stops inside um or trigger stops inside so that's how you do that so now i know how to do both of those so the next thing i was trying to figure out is how did they do the thumbstick tension like how does that work and, you know, I couldn't, I really couldn't figure it out. And um, so I went online and I started doing more research and I found a guy who didn't exactly know how to do it, but he speculated on how he thought it was done. And I, I decided, you know what, I've got, you know, I had a board that I already took apart. Um, it was damaged anyways, you know, it wasn't any good because it was a damaged controller. Uh, well, it partially worked, but for the most part, the controller didn't work. Um, so I decided, let me just take this apart. And I decided to remove the rocker mechanisms, because there's two, obviously, from the controller. And uh, I destroyed the first one, uh, not because I took it off, but because I was dissecting it to try to figure out how the damn thing works. <laughs> so I'm going to try to uh, demonstrate that here. It's going to be a little difficult. So as you can see, here's the, 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 the rocker inside. That's what the thumbstick connects to. This is the assembled one. Okay. And then this is the, the inside part. So, and then of course you've got, you've got your, uh, sensors yeah i'm just dropping shit everywhere by the way this is an adult channel so if, if there are kids under age well too bad <laughs> so anyways uh this is the sensor here and uh this there's two of them that, that you know basically uh transmit the information uh to the motherboard as far as our, your articulation of your motion um anyways that's that's pretty much what controls the the rocker mechanism but one of the one of the issues is um 
man, and I already uh, put it together. So now that I have this rocker mechanism put together, actually, let me see if I can show you on, yeah, I can. So the, the journey was to figure out how, in fact, do they increase the tension on these thumbsticks? Well, I figured it out. <laughs> it's actually, it's pretty easy, but it's a little hard at the same time. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So this is not going to be the best explanation because I've already torn this apart. But in my future videos, once I, you know, get this down, I do want to do, I do want to create some how-to videos because I want to teach you guys how to do this. I want you guys to, who, who do want to take the initiative to start doing this yourselves. So that way you can stop paying, you know, the hundreds of dollars for pro controllers and just start doing it yourself. Because now that I know how to do this, uh, obviously I do need to practice and put it to, you know, put it to practice the hardware, uh, in regards to building a pro controller is literally less than a hundred dollars. I mean, you're probably talking, I'd say anywhere from 60 to $80 for all the hardware necessary to build a pro controller. Now that's just the base. Now, if you want to start adding like a flashy front cover, you know, like what I did, you know, a nice front face or, or, or uh, specialized buttons, then of course that's gonna get a little bit more expensive. Uh, then you might start looking at 100 to maybe 120. But these pro controller companies like Scuff, Battle Beaver, uh, uh, Cinch, Aim, they're charging two to $300 for these controllers when they're really only, it's only costing them roughly about $80 in hardware. Now, I know obviously this takes time. It takes skill to be able to do that. And that's kind of what you're paying for. Out of all the videos I've watched on people who do know how to do this work, who are in practice of doing it, building a pro controller from scratch roughly takes, if you go all out with like what I did on this controller, if you go all out, you're looking at about, I'd say if you're a pro and you're really good, you know exactly what you're doing, uh, there aren't any technical issues, I'd say you could probably do it in less than two hours from somebody who's a professional who's been doing it a while. For somebody who maybe has not, you're looking at maybe three hours, uh, maybe a little bit more, you know, give or take. Um, but honestly, I'd rather spend $80 and three hours of my time than two to $300, depending on what you're having done. That's how I see it. You guys might not, but that, and, and furthermore, the fact that if your controller does break down, you can repair it because usually it's something small. Maybe a button gave out. Maybe one of the rocker me mechanisms gave out. You can fix that and still use that same controller. Don't throw away the controller and go and spend another two or three hundred dollars like like some of these guys I'm seeing do that on YouTube. Like I said, I know a guy on YouTube who has literally gone through about twenty pro controllers over a seven to ten year period. That's crazy. That's that's just ludicrous. I mean, you're you're you. I mean, I I haven't done the math on that, but that's just way too much money. I'd rather be spending that money on games. Okay, that's just my thought process. So anyways, the thumbstick tension, I got off on a rabbit hole there, but uh, it was part of the discussion of what I wanted to talk about. So in order to increase the thumbstick tension, there is a spring. Uh, this white stick has a spring mechanism installed on it that goes inside the thumbstick. And then this, this part, goes inside the housing, which is what we have here. Okay. Now the spring I just showed you for, for the rocker mechanism. Okay. Is actually, so I can pull that back out. That spring there is actually about half the size of what the spring normally is. 
And the reason why is because I cut it in half so I could increase the tension on this thumbstick and I had success, it works. So there's three ways hypothetically of how Battle Beaver does it, okay? And I just was guessing as I was, you know, disassembling this and trying to, you know, build it myself. Now, I totally fucked this one up. It works. But now that I know how to do it, the next one, I have no doubts, will be a success. Well, this one was a complete fuck up because I was tearing it apart to dissect it. This one was just a half of a fuck up. And then the next one should be good to go. I may fuck up a little bit on the soldering. I'll probably do some tests before I do it, but I'm very confident I know what to do now. So there's a, there's a few different ways that Battle Beaver is doing the increased thumbstick tension. One way is they are adding a washer uh, to this white stick and then putting the spring on and then putting the, the pieces back together. That would work. I don't think that's the best way to do it. And the reason why is, as we all know, over time, there, there's a button that when you when you press down on this, this, this button here, which you, know, you don't see right now, um, it's actually on this motherboard here. It presses down on this button here. Uh, it's broken, by the way. It actually is supposed to fit on here. I broke it. But um, over time, it's going to wear out. And as it wears out, there's actually a, fixed, uh, a way to fix that. But if you add the washer method uh, to the, the, the rocker mechanism, you will not be able to do that. So I would not go with the washer method. It will work. But once this button wears out, you won't be able to fix that button. So I don't recommend doing the washer method. So that led me to the other two possibilities. One, they found another spring of this size that is that has either a higher tension rate or, well, yeah, basically a higher tension rate. So that's one option. Or uh, they found one that was longer, same tension rate, but just a little bit longer. And the other option, which I guess could be a fourth, is what I did, is they take these springs and they cut one of them and they just add more spring to the spring that's already installed. And sure enough, I had success. Uh, now, this is this one I did fuck up a little bit. Like I said, it was a half fuck up, but it works. Like, I feel the difference in tension. Like, it feels like my controller. Um, the, now, the, 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 different, the thing is, though, uh, that Battle Beaver is able to do that I have not been able to do is how to measure it. Because I don't really know how much tension I've added. I just know that I've increased it. I don't really know how much. Um, so now I need to figure out how, you know, the best way to go about as far as how much to increase it. I'm thinking if I find the exact spring size and just go with a different length, all I need to do is dick around with the, the length to figure out which one's going to give me a specific uh, tension and there I go. And then once I have the length, then I already know. Um, so thumbstick tension has been solved. Uh, I do need to, obviously, like I said, dick around with it some more to get it more refined, but I know how, I know the mechanics. I know how to do it now. Uh, one of the problems that I had with this, um, and why the first one got destroyed. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate. Actually, I might be, I won't be able to demonstrate, but I might be able to show is, if you see at the bottom of that rocker, the blue plate there, you notice there's like these, these uh, silver, at, the, at, the, at each corner there's these silver feet and they're basically wrapping around, holding it together. That's what holds the top of the crown onto the, the blue base uh, in order to keep everything pretty much held together. Now, I like I said, I, I fucked this one up because I didn't know how this thing came apart. Now I do. Now I know how to take it apart. Um, 
So I ended up breaking them off. Now this one I fucked up because I just, I, I ended up using a little bit too much pressure. Um, and I still was still kind of learning. Um, and I thought in order to take this apart, I thought what I needed to do was bend those feet up. You don't have to do that. In fact, all you need to do, if you look at the side of the of this rocker here, actually over here, what you do, it's really difficult because of the angle I have my camera and to be able to hold this up to the camera. Uh, you can actually pry a part on each side and it will, this this part will just drop right out and no damage is done. Very little tension is actually done to the the tension is actually done to this top part which is much much stronger so you're not going to break it so uh, again i will explain all of this once i do my demos on how to increase thumbstick tension but for now i'm just kind of you know just kind of giving you a basic idea of how it all works so uh, that's that's how the thumbstick tension works and like i said i got this one to work and i feel the difference compared to the original much, much, much better. So, and some of you who don't care about the thumbstick tension, that's great because this mod does require the most work. I, I would, in my opinion, I think this mod probably requires the most work out of all the other mods um, because you've literally got to unsolder the rocker from the board. This is the board. It's actually soldered on. I don't have a soldering iron yet, so I had to just cut the motherfucker off. But once I got it off, that's how I was able to pretty much take it apart. But normally, what you would do is down here on the bottom of the board, you go in and you just take your soldering iron, you heat it up, and you unsolder these, and you pop it off, and then you, you know, go in and you take apart and you, you know, add in your spring to increase the tension. So. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are probably wondering if this thing is going to wear out, here's the cool thing. Normally what wears out on these on these rockers is the sensor. Uh, I think, oh, yep, I got one right here. So this is the sensor. These are what wear, this is what wears out on the rocker. Uh, so if your rocker dies, okay, unless the spring breaks, which doesn't happen very often. Um, usually what happens is you start getting drift or whatever. Um, uh, and it's because the sensor has worn out and some people think, Oh, once that happens, the, the controller's dead. You got to pretty much replace the motherboard. And if you're going to replace the board, you might as well replace the whole controller. Not true. Uh, you can actually open up the controller and you can replace just the sensor. Now, in order to do that, you gotta buy a rocker. Uh, and you can buy the rockers on Amazon. I think they're $5 for, uh, for a pair. So you get two for like five bucks. And they're just like these. They're originals that you can buy. You can buy knockoffs as well. Uh, you, know, it, what, you know, whatever you choose to do. I mean, um, you can test either or, but um, you're probably, you're not, you don't need the rockers. All you gotta do is just take off the sensor and install it on your original. That way you don't have to go through the trouble of unsoldering the whole rocker and install the sensor and you're good to go. So again, all this shit that I've learned, you know, in this journey of, uh, of, um, building these pro controllers. So, um, so that is, that is, uh, that's my video log for now. Um, I, I, I do, I will have more, more things coming, but I just wanted to kind of talk about, you know, what I've been up to, uh, what I've been doing, you know, obviously I've already been, you know, learning to teach myself how to disassemble these controllers, put them together, uh, learning how to do all these modifications. Um, now I did want to speak about one last thing before I let you guys go what I need in order to start building these pro controllers. So I, I bought me a kit, uh, a screwdriver kit. Um, I'm not going to do a full demo of that here, but, um, it comes with like, let's see, actually, I don't, I don't want to fully do everything, but let me just kind of show you, 
the kit up in this right corner comes with all these screwdriver bits and it comes with the pry bar and uh, everything you need to take apart the controller. And I got that for, I think, like 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, so that, that was relatively inexpensive. Um, but I need a, a couple of other things. I need a good soldering iron. Now, there's all different kinds of soldering irons. Um, I, I was able to find one that is more of a middle grade. It's about uh, just under 50 bucks. Uh, which is a little, you know, seems a little pricey, but the high-end professional ones run about two to three hundred dollars. The cheap ones are like ten to twenty dollars. Uh, you don't really want to go with the cheap ones because what happens is once you go to start uh, unsoldering things like this, you could if you get a cheap one, you can end up burning up the board. So you do want to get a decent uh, soldering iron. And the one that I found has really good reviews on Amazon. It's been rated by all these. Uh, you know, circuitry uh, developers and whatnot. So um, I'll, I'll do a review of that later on once I get it. Um, the other thing that you need is some helping hands. Those are cheap. They're like 10 to $12 um, and you need a magnifier. Now you can go with a magnifier or you can just pick you up some reading glasses from Walmart. They, uh, these were $3 at Walmart and these work really well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need a magnifier, but I do need helping hands. Um, if I do end up having to get the magnifier, uh, there's one I found that's really nice. It's got a helping hands, a magnifier and a built-in uh, led light system. And it's got a soldering iron, uh, holder. So you can be doing everything all at once. It's a little pricey though. That's actually really expensive. It's more than the damn soldering iron. It's like 70 bucks. Uh, I'm hoping to avoid getting that. I'm hoping I could just get the helping hands and just do that. Um, because that, that's an expense I really don't feel that's necessary. Uh, the helping hands is, but the, the, the magnifier with the light, although it would be useful, I, I don't think, I think that's just a bit excessive. Um, so anyways, um, I'm hoping to, to get, uh, getting that, uh, that's kind of like the next, uh, jump. Um, not sure if I'm going to do that next month. I just have to see what my budget is because, uh, I do have to send in this controller to have the mods done and uh, got some other personal things that I've got to attend to. But if I can squeeze out uh, getting some of the other things that I need, then hopefully I can grab my nutsack and jump right into doing this. And the sooner the better because then I can start creating content videos and tutorials on how to do that. That way you can guys, uh, you guys can start doing that as well. Um, but if that doesn't happen in January, it will be happening in February. Um, there, you know, I will definitely be able to start making that happen in February, uh, without any, you know, any issues. Um, so, uh, another thing I've also, I'm also going to, uh, start live streaming my gameplay. I've already started. I went ahead and did a full, uh, run of Alice Madness Returns. Uh, and I did that with a pro controller. And uh, I can tell you right now, uh, my gameplay with the Pro Controller, uh, it is, it, it's, it's just night and day. Now, a Pro Controller, obviously, uh, it, you know, it, at the end of the day, you still need skill to be able to play and, 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 and defeat a game. Uh, but the right tool for the right job always helps. And uh, it, it definitely has... Uh, it's made the it's made the gameplay uh, to be a lot more fluid. So when I'm actually playing, I don't feel like I'm fighting the controls. It's so immersive now that I I don't even really feel like I'm holding the controller. I feel immersed in the game. Whereas before, uh, I just felt like you know having to take my thumb off the thumbstick to to use the thump face buttons. It just it just wasn't very fluid. So. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, you can have a pro controller all you want, but you know, nothing beats raw skill. You do need to be able to be competent, uh, you know, to play a, a video game. So, um, anyways, that that's the end of this vlog. It's uh, obviously it's very long. Uh, in the future, uh, the vlogs will be getting better. Once I start editing, I'll be able to start chopping these up, making them a little bit shorter. Um, but, anyways. Uh, hope this has been a benefit to you guys and um, I hope you guys uh, will spread the word. Hopefully more people come to the channel 
and will be uh, benefiting from what this journey is is uh, is offering. Uh, for now, uh, all I can say is thank you. Please subscribe. Please like if you liked it. If you disliked it, please dislike. And uh, if you're so inclined, please leave any comments, questions, or concerns down below. And not only do I want you guys to be happy gaming, but straight up keep gaming, guys, uh, and take care.